Hi, I'm Ed Zachary with Medina County Veterans Service Office. And if you're a veteran and you're in a crisis or worse yet, contemplating suicide, I want you to pick up the phone and call the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-8255. Do it now. Welcome everybody to this month's uh, Salute to Service, and I want to welcome with me today Army and Navy veteran Deanne Covey. How are you? I'm fine. Elisa. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> so, a Medina resident for how long now? Uh, a little over two years. A little over two years. two years. And where are you originally from, Deanne? I'm actually from Maslin. From Maslin, Stark County. Yeah. Absolutely. Down so, the road. So I got to ask, I know the Army and Navy veteran, the Army makes you tough, I got that. But <laughs> <laughs> so. Tell me a little bit about when you joined the service and growing up and why you joined and everything else. Wow, that's a lot. Um, so why did I join? Um, coming out of high school, I really didn't have a path mm -hmm. to anything that was exciting or just really didn't have a plan. Right. So I figured join the military, get myself together, and then I'll just turn to from there and do what I whatever I choose to do in life. So a girlfriend of mine had said, I'll join with you. You know how back in the right. day we oh, had the, yeah, buddy the buddy system. system yeah. yeah. So we went, we did the buddy system. Uh, we got through the testing. Um, I showed up. She didn't thereafter. And <laughs> so she kind of went AWOL on me. Actually, she deserted me. So I ended up joining the military on my own. Um, no, prior to me, no one in my family really ever served. So right. it was a little unique. Um, joined the Army back in 1986. Six. Was it the Guard, Reserve, or Active, active Duty? Army. Active, active oh, Army. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Active Duty Army. Um, I went down to Fort McClellan for my boot camp, mm -hmm. which was really exciting. And then I went to AIT over at Fort Jackson. And what did you do in the Army? So I was a per personal action specialist. Okay. So 75 right. Echo. I think okay. they've reclassed since yeah, then. But yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. But so yeah. was, was boot camp, I mean, so you're an 18 year old. Girl, basically. I was 17, 17 when I joined. So was, was boot camp mm -hmm. tough on you? Was it a different wake up call or anything? I, it was exciting. Yeah. It was exciting to me because I was being challenged. Right. And I liked it. Um, it was tough, mm -hmm. um, but I'm also very competitive within myself. So my goal was to get a first time go on everything, right. which I did. Right. Um, I actually was honored to be, I was blessed actually to be the honor grad from my platoon. Cool. Um, yeah, it was really exciting. That came down to my run time right. too. Um, but I enjoyed it. I really did. It was tough. It made me feel like I, I, I was solid, yeah. like I was complete. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think you boot camp and I mean, they're tough, they're hard and everything, but I think sure. as long as you can keep your mouth shut and, and have people yell at you. Oh, and I had that problem. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, but I mean, you do what you're told and it's pretty much fun stuff to do, even though I mean, you know, may not, some people may not look at it as getting muddy and dirty and yelled at as fun, no, but so it's kind of challenging. It right? was, and it was really interesting because I was down at Fort McClellan and it was with the MPs. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was, there was just a platoon of females right. with three platoons of males. So we had those bay barracks right. and when we would have our details and we'd have to do our chores for the day, if you would, I had to do the stairwell and I got caught talking. Oh. Yeah, Drill Sergeant didn't yeah, like so that you're so much. Stairs now or no, actually, uh, it was really interesting as uh, Drill Sergeant Talavera, you'll never forget their names, um, said, Private Covey, you want to have a conversation with Private So and so? Get down in the front lane and rest position. So we're down in the front lane and rest position, and he, the drill sergeant's kneeling down with us, and he's like, So where are you from, Private Covey? Did you hear that? Private Covey's from Maslin. <laughs> where are you from? And we're standing, and then so I look over at my fellow comrade, and he's just weenie arms, you know, he's shaking. And, and the drill sergeant thought that was so awesome that I outlast this gentleman. Oh, wow, well, yeah. But that the downside cool. was this was the beginning of boot camp for the rest of the time, every time he saw me, I don't care what evolution we were at. Private Covey, come here, so-and-so wants to have a conversation with you. <laughs> so, yeah, so I said, I, did, I didn't, I yeah. should have kept my mouth shut. So how long, how long did you serve in the Army? 
Eight years. Eight years. I did eight years, yeah. And where'd you serve yeah. at? Uh, well, my first duty station was amazing. I went down to Panama, which Ooh, was wow. great. Yeah. I, you know, 18 years yeah. old. Now, what year overseas. was that? Uh, 87 is okay, when I got out of, I, yep, I got out of boot camp in 87 in AIT and went down mm -hmm. to Panama. Um, spent two years down there. Um, great tour. Great Were tour. Were you at Fort Sherman or? I was at Fort Clayton. Okay, Clayton. Yeah, yeah. right there at Fort yeah. Clayton. Um, went down to Fort Sherman for jungle training mm -hmm. and my yeah. PLDC. Yeah. So we went over there for that. But so that's that's got to be a pretty crazy change because I know, you know, going from Maslin to Panama, Panama is kind of a really different place. Right. Yeah, so oh, it was great. Yeah. It was, it was, it was really fun. I mean, mm -hmm. I was playing softball down there on the side, you know, just really enjoying the country. It was. And Did you like the jungle? No. <laughs> 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 no, I did not like the jungle at all. Um, it was good training, though. It was fun. Yeah. It was really fun. Um, they actually, we were the first class they incorporated the jungle training into the PLDC. Okay. Right. So that was fun. I got to tell you, out of all the, you know, I did a lot of training courses in, in the in Army, and I, the, the one down there at Fort Sherman still yeah. sticks out as probably one of the most oh realistic gosh. and one of the best. And I, right. I remember right. saying, well, you could just sit somebody in the jungle for an hour and they would get trained on something because something's going to happen. Something's going to yeah. happen down there. You know, and it's so funny is going through there when we had to do the land mm -hmm. nav portion of it, I was with an 11 Bravo. So I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, you got yeah. this admin type. I've got 11 Bravo over here. I'm yeah. good to go. He got he, lost. He got lost. <laughs> <laughs> got us stuck in coup de grace and everything. It was awful. So what made you awful. decide to get out of the Army? Um, so I really didn't want to get out of the Army. I really loved it. Um, after I left uh, Panama, I went to Fort Detrick, and I did about 12 months there, and I was getting ready to get out, and okay. I re-enlisted for Airborne. So I ended up going down to Benning, and I went to jump school, and then I got stationed to Fort Bragg, which okay. was great. Um, after went over to Desert Shield and Desert Storm, if you would, um, came back, I got orders to go to Korea. Okay. So I went on a hardship. Well, at this time I had two children and they okay. were very young. Right. And that hardship was really hard on them. So my, my son, at the time when I left, he wasn't talking. He was just a baby. Right. And when I came back, his first words to me at the airport, are you my mommy? Oh, wow. And it was, it was yeah, really heart-wrenching. Kind of a... I, I, so I wasn't done serving because I really enjoyed what I did. You know, it was, mm -hmm. I had a purpose and I had a right. goal now. When I went into the military to find myself, I found myself right. there. And so after I got back, I went to first, oh, got back to Bragg, I went to first art and I was like, Top, I, I, I gotta go, I, I have to be a mom. Right. And he respected that, so I got out and um, got the children into school. Right. Um, and that's kind of how Did I, you come back to Maslin or where did you go after that? After I got out, um, I was at Fort Campbell. I ended up coming back up to Maslin and couldn't really find, I went to college and, and got a, my degree as a paralegal and mm -hmm. wasn't really able to find anything down that way in Canton. So I right. ended up going to Akron and working okay. up there for a little bit. Yeah. So I know that, that you almost, you know, you do the same thing I do for a living. You've worked up in Ottawa County Veterans mm -hmm. Service Office and you're currently working for the state and sure. you're going to take a new job here soon. Um, how did you get into that? So, funny enough, that's actually a segue into my Navy career. Well, that, that, that was my that next is question a great, too. That yeah. is a great segue into my Navy career. Um, once, a, once my children had gotten into school, as I stated, I wanted to finish my, my purpose, my mm -hmm. serving, because I, I wasn't done serving. And so I went to see the Navy recruiter, and I said, hey, you know, I'd really love to go back into the, our, I'm sorry, the Army recruiter. Right. I said, I'd really love to go back into the military and serve. He says, great, no problem, your prior service, let's see what we got. So he got my records, he said, you've been out six years. And I was like, yeah, and he was like, mm, I can't take you, you've been out too long. And I was like, well, can't you do a waiver? He's like, you'd right. be a shot in the dark. And I'm like, let's try. He's like, no. Nope. He said, go see the Navy. They'll take anyone. Wow. <laughs> so I, I did. didn't say that. He you did. did. <laughs> He's, no, the Army recruiters yeah. said that. So actually, so I did go see the Navy, right. and they did take me. Right. So it was really exciting. Um, I was just happy to serve. I, and the downside was is that because of my Army experience, um, they didn't send me to boot camp. Oh, okay. And that was really hard to transition. Literally, I was a fish out of water. Right. It was so hard. I showed up my first drill weekend and I had I had a class B type uniform one with the Navy and that doesn't fly. Um, I didn't know what the pieces, you have so many pieces of clothing. It, you would think as a woman, I would love that. Right. If it rains, you wear this. If, you know, if it snows, you wear this. We have so many different uniforms, but I was confused a lot. Right. So I couldn't do it. I went and I talked to the, to the skipper, if you wouldn't. I had a conditional release to go over to the Army because once you're in, I didn't know this. You can go to any branch. Right. So I was going to go back and serve in the Army. And so the, the, the skipper said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. 
you come on board the reserve center. You do six months ADSW. If you don't like it, I'll sign this and I'll let you be a running target. So roger that, sir. So I actually went to the reserve center in Akron and mm -hmm. I went ADSW, which means I served, you know, like active duty for six months. And I started learning a lot. And I had a first class that took me under their wings. I was, in, they came, brought me in right. as an A4. And uh, I was just learning so much and I really enjoyed it. Well, part of my duties was I coordinated the military funeral honors at Ritman, the National oh, Cemetery. Okay, yeah. That was part of my duties. And the other side was I was doing the legal form because the Navy brought me in as a legal man. Mm -hmm. So through that, I got to meet a gentleman that was working up in Cuyahoga County as the executive director. And he said, hey, how would you like to be a service officer? And I was like, I don't even know what that is, mm -hmm. which is sad, you right. know. Um, but I didn't know, and I said, well, let me look into it. And so I did, and at this point, my six months on ADSW turned into three years. Oh, wow. I was, do I was enjoying it. Years, I yeah. was loving yeah. it. I was learning so much, and yeah. I was really feeling like I was a part of the Navy now, and mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it. But I knew that I couldn't stay there forever. So this opportunity came in the civilian sector, and I accepted it graciously, and I became a service officer up in Cuyahoga County. Okay. And I worked up there for about five years, I think it was, Ed. And then I got orders for another deployment. And um, I deployed, and when I came back from that deployment, um, I was contacted by Ottawa County that they had an executive director position open up. Yeah. And, and, and they were very glad, I'm sure. Oh, you do yeah. a great job. I loved, oh, yeah. I loved it. It was, it was such an amazing opportunity. It really isn't, a, it's a calling, it's not a job. It really do. is. Yeah. It was such an amazing opportunity to so go So let's there. talk about your deployments with the Navy. What oh, did, wow. wh wh where did you go? What did you do? Were you on a ship? Were you on the land? Oh, you, you know what's funny is I probably am one of the very few Navy personnel that can tell you I've served in the Navy and never been on a ship. Really? I've never been on a ship. Wow. I, uh, I'm in the Army. And I, I served on a ship. Come on, there you I, go. Didn't serve there, on, there you go. I didn't serve on a ship. I was on a you ship. You were on the yeah. ship. Yeah, they were taking you somewhere. I'm sure, um, and dropping you off. Right? Was it a one-way trip? <laughs> no, it was just I've been on the ship. So I mean, I don't You've know. Been on the ship. No, I mean, aside from just like stepping foot on some of them right. that are docked, I no, I never have. Um, that was the thing when I was coming off the ADSW. I was really intimidated because I was assigned to U.S. Forces Japan, and I knew that there might be some duty that I would have to go out and do, and, and I just wasn't down with that. So one of the uh, one of the sailors at the time uh, came up to me. He was like, you know, hey, Ellen, too. Why don't you be a CB? And I'm like what's a CV? I don't, I don't even know what a CV is. You know, right. I'm not used to this Navy stuff. I'm just learning all this other right. stuff. So um, he was like, well, he said, you know, we go to the field. I'm like, you go to the field? And he's like, yeah. I was like, sign me up. That's what I <laughs> want to do. That's the Army. Me, yeah. It was the Army. So literally my Navy career was just like serving in the Army. Right. It really was. Matter of so fact, where did you go on deployment? My last, well, my last deployment, I was IA and okay. dropped in and we served um, at, on an Army base. They were actually um, our hierarchy, if you would. But uh, my first deployment was with the Seabees. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up going over to, we were home based in, at Camp Morrell, um, who's the father of the Seabees. We were home based there. Uh, we had we had uh, different work teams, if you would, all throughout Iraq at that mm -hmm. time. Um, and then um, we did have some up in, Af in Hoa in Afghanistan. Okay. So we were there. I actually provided, uh, I was independent duty as a legal man, so I provided the legal support that okay. we needed to the, um, it was one of our uh, OICs at the time, okay. we, our CO. Cool. Our CO was back in the rear at Gulfport. Good. So it was a good, it was a good deployment. Um, unfortunately, there was a need for me. We did have people that got in some trouble yeah. um, while we were in theater. Um, but you know, you'd be amazed so the stuff that it, it's just it's just a product of us being there. Right. You know, it's, yeah. it's unfortunate. And then uh, the second deployment that I did with the Navy was just recently, actually. Um, I was I went over as legal again, which was really uh, interesting because this was a higher step of legal. Um, duties and responsibilities that right. we did. And uh, it was funny, while I was there, our command master chief would go away a lot um, on orders, and so I was acting SEL for some time too. So it, w it was a great experience. So now you just recently retired from I the Navy. I did, yeah. I did. I retired in July, almost a year. As what rank? Uh, Senior Chief Petty Officer. Okay, and that is an E-8 for that those that don't know. That's, that's, that that's up there, yeah. That is, yeah. It's, so it, congratulations. It, thank you, it was, it was certainly my privilege to serve. I mean. Being a chief is just amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have such heritage in, in our what we do. Um, and just having the opportunity to attain the rank of senior chief petty officer is so humbling in, in your career. It really is. And having that opportunity because, um, you know, like 
when you get to that rank in the military and, and the Navy, if you would, it's not about your trait. No. So my legalman stuff always, it all went to the, right. the wayside. And as you know, it's just about leadership. It's about people. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so, you know, having that opportunity to lead in yeah. my last duty assignment as the SEL for my reserve center, having all those sailors looking up to you and yeah. guiding them. And it's just amazing. It's pretty awesome. It is. There's nothing yeah. like it in the world. Yeah. Have you had the chance to go on an army base and tell them you're an EA? Oh my God. So <laughs> I, can, I, can I tell you this story about my last deployment? <laughs> this is so great. So I told you I went to AIT at Fort Jackson, mm -hmm. right? Well, with the individual augmentee program that they have us in now, we have to go down and we have to do a training before we get into theater. Right. Now, with the CVs, we did our own training for two months down in Gulfport, mm -hmm. and you know we got spun up and ready, and 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 we were good to go. Well, now what they do is they take you down to an army base. It just so happens it was Fort Jackson. Oh, okay. Like this is total full circle for right. me, right? right? You know, it's like full circle. So we're on these white buses, as you know, and we're driving onto the base and we stop at our training site and the door opens up and here comes a drill sergeant. I saw that hat and my heart is pounding. <laughs> it was pounding. And I was like, what are you doing? You're an E8 now. You know, it's yeah. like, <gasps> and it's yeah. just totally well, hat still Oh my God. Yeah. You still fear the yeah. hat. Yeah. So we get off of the bus and ends up that I was actually in charge of the group. So I'm, lead, I'm the leader of the group and I'm actually working beside this E8 that came up, the drill sergeant. And um, we worked really close together through the, through the training evolution. And at the end, he was just wanting a little bit of feedback because being Navy and they were training us right. and how they did. And I had to share that, sir, that story with him. I said, I feared your hat from the moment you stepped on that bus. <laughs> and I had to remember that I wasn't that little private yeah. anymore, but it, you fear the hat. Yeah. That's something I don't think will ever but go it's away. It's funny though, because my experience with going on a Navy base is, you know, in, in the Army and E8s and E8s and E8, you know, as a oh. first sergeant, of course you got respect for him. Sure. Boy, first time I went on a Navy base, I said, well, what's your rank? I showed him my ID card. We were, I was on vacation. I, oh. I mean, I was just there kind of going to the PX for an E8 in the Navy's like God. I mean, you, they are like, they roll out the red carpet sure, for you. They're like, sure. oh, you could have this room in the hotel. I'm like, wow, sure. she's joined the Navy. Sure, absolutely. You know, in my last deployment, like I said, we worked with the Army, and I actually yeah. mentored some um, Army paralegals while we were over there. Um, but we were in our chief's mess, which was a, a trailer we procured. Right. And, um, but it's our mess. Right. And the SAR major had came over with his first sergeant and we were talking about some things that we wanted to do with the, with the army. And we did it in the mess. And they're sitting there going, wow, this is really nice. And, yeah. oh, come on, for theater, it was pretty high speed right. for them. Right. And uh, there was a knock at the door and it was our CO. And he was like, after he left, he said, he had to knock. And I was like, He's, Nobody comes in the chief's mess. No one mess. comes in the yeah. chief's mess. Yeah. No, officers aren't, they have their ward room. Yeah. And he thought that was so cool. He looked at his first sergeant and he's like, we need one of these. Yeah, we need, yeah. I, I bet <laughs> you'd probably get a we, lot of them to agree with that. We yeah. need one of these, yeah. you know, because it, it's just, you know, we are held to a different, right. you know. Yeah, there, it, is, it is a bit different. There's a line. It's cool. It is It cool, is though. great. Yeah. It, it's, it is cool. it's a privilege. It is now, a true privilege. Now, you said that, you know, you were like the first one to join the military in your family. You really sure. didn't come for this. But it's obviously carried on because you do have a son in the I Marine Corps. I do. I have a son who is a, who is a devil dog. Mm -hmm. um, I also have two ne two nephews that joined the Marine Corps. Yeah. So that's great. You know, we kind of started the path. So is it easier being the chief or is it easier being the soldier or the, the sailor than it is being the mom? With my son? Yes. He calls me senior chief mama. But I mean, I, I mean. <laughs> it's, it's a little of both. You know, it's really interesting with him. Um, when he was growing up, he, he needed some, he needed to be squared away. He, right. was, he was a little wayward, um, with all respect. Um, all children are. And so I stuck him into the Sea Cadet program. Oh, okay. I stuck him in the Secret yeah, that's program. that's a great program, too. It was an amazing yeah, program. it was a really good program. It really, really yeah. was. And I watched him just really enjoy it, and he grew. He went in at the age of 10, and then when he graduated high school, he ended up attaining the rank of Chief Petty Officer. Mm -hmm. So that was really a, a, such an accomplishment right. for him. So when he, after he graduated high school, he decided he wanted to go into the military, which is kind of evident through his path. And uh, he was going to go into the Navy. He mm -hmm. wanted to be a Navy officer. He wanted to be a SEAL. And I'm like, that's great, son. Right. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get into the academy because he missed a timeline working with his recruiter. Um, and I said, that's okay. Right. It's meant to be. There's a sign there. So right. he was going to go enlisted. And I said, you can't. 
You can't sign. Yeah. You, you've done that. You've done all those correspondence courses right. in the Casica. You need challenges, and right. you'll, you'll get bored. So he needed a challenge and needed something new, so I brought a Marine recruiter, <laughs> recruiter home, and he thought it was nuts. And yeah. I'm like, you're an amazing leader. I think that you have this yeah. in you. You've got that discipline, and you're ready. So um, he ended up doing a really good job with um, his testing, and he had a great opportunity to do pretty much anything he wanted yeah. to do. So what did he choose? He was a sniper. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, though. Yeah. Well, it is. Uh, it yeah, is. But from a mom's perspective, I'm sure you worry, you worry about him, I'm sure. Oh, of course. Yeah. I really do. When he first went in, he was actually on presidential security. So that mm -hmm. was a really great experience for me because right. <laughs> I got to go to uh, Camp David with them mm -hmm. and, and I oh, got cool. to go into the White House oh, wow. and uh, got to meet cool. the commander in chief with them. Wow. Um, it was really cool. I showed up in uniform. So we got like a great family picture of right. us. You know? Yeah, I've seen the picture. <laughs> it is a cool picture. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, so very, I'm very proud of him. Good. I'm very, very proud of him. Um, he's he's yeah he, he makes me proud he calls me senior chief mama and it's, it's so a lot of our uh, our dealings he calls me a lot for advice right. and guidance well, that's and, good. and oh yeah yeah he yeah. does good I, I guess my point was is sometimes it's harder being the, the loved one than it is being the actual sailor or soldier because you do worry it, about it, I, it mean, is I, I couldn't imagine it what is it's like, you know? but you know what's really cool about it though is like his letters from boot camp you know, he's like disgusted with the leadership because he's used to seeing me at home. Oh well, yeah. And you know, and so <laughs> he sized me up before he left. So everything that I've accomplished, he's trying, you know, he's marking that yeah. in his career. So he did get honor grad just yeah. like I did. So I went down there um, for, his, for his graduation at, um, down in Paris Island. Huge, just huge down there. I, I, it blows my graduation right. out of the water, if you would. Yeah. But it was really amazing, and it was um, it was really funny. Is that his drill instructor uh, saw me at graduation in my dress blues? Mm -hmm. He said, "I should have known you had a chief at home." <laughs> <laughs> he funny. said, "I should have known." Yeah, he's probably a little more squared away. He than was yet. really squared well, away. You know, I mean, they, we always said if you're not complaining, then you know you're not happy. I mean, sure. You know, it's a little different terminology, but I mean, sure, you know, sure, there's sure. always things to complain about. Oh you know, yeah. So it's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're settled in down, down in Wadsworth area, and then that's where you're at. Now you're getting involved in the VFW down there, right? Well, I, yes, I am. <laughs> I transferred my memberships for my American Legion as well as mm -hmm. my BFW, and um, I just got uh, I just got elected as the adjutant Good. for our post. Good for you. So Good I'm for excited you. about that. I'm just starting to get my feet in the water there. And you're a Legion rider. I am a Legion yeah. rider with the American Legion. Yes. And, and any rides Not at lately? this post here. I'm still up at my Elmore still post in, membership. Uh, in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. in Ottawa? It's yeah. still in Ottawa. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. still with one. Any rides yeah. going on? Coming up or anything like um, that? Well, we're going to be escorting the wall. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know the wall is going to yeah. be coming up with the Wadsworth uh, yeah. riders. They're going to be doing So we that. got the wall coming in, and then sure. we're doing uh, the, the Wadsworth riders are doing that big memorial ride mm -hmm. August 6th down there, that too. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's going to be that's going to be our final event here for the, the three events we're doing for the 50th yeah. commemoration. And it should be good. I mean, that's... Oh, absolutely. The first two have been kind of, you know, the first one was a history. The second one is kind of a healing as we're calling it, and I think the third one's going to, it's meant to be festive. It's meant to welcome these guys home and say thanks. And, right. And, uh, and bring the younger folks out too, you know, I mean, I say younger, we're, we're Iraq and Afghanistan mm -hmm. vets, but there's much younger ones than us too. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, let them partake in the yeah, festivities really too. So, mm -hmm. so it's cool. Any, any, I guess, uh, words of wisdom, I'm sure you've given a lot to your son going to the court, but any words of wisdom you have for somebody that's thinking about joining the military or? There's nothing better than serving your country. You know, and, and it's funny is when I talk to my sailors and I'm like, you know, why did you join? Why are you here? I like to hear why they're joining. Right. You know, I like to know, and a lot of it is the benefits. You know, mm -hmm. I'm here for education, which is great. Right. It's, an, it's an amazing perk. Right. But at the end of the day, when you raise your hand, you're serving the cloth of this great nation. Right. You know, and, and if you don't have it, it's okay. It's going to come. Right. Yeah. It'll come through your it, it does. through your faithful service. Oh, yeah, that's maturity there. too. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. But my thing is, is that I, I would have to tell anybody the advice that I did to myself. If you're wayward and you don't know what you want to be when you grow up, it's okay. Don't waste those days. Right. Serve your country. Yeah. There's nothing better than the, that. The payoff is, is huge. It, it's it's word words can't describe right. it. You yeah. know, you and I both know. I mean, yeah. you've you've served, you've retired, yeah. and yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anyone. Yeah. I wouldn't either. You know, yeah, it was mm -hmm. great. So what about our veterans that, that are coming out? What's, what's, what do you advise them to do? Because I know you're in the same business I am as far as helping vets. Sure. What, 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 what do you think um, for the younger guys and gals coming out? 
what do you, how do you get them back into everyday life? You know, that's, that's really challenging um, because this urban war that we fight is so different, mm -hmm. you know, and it's high speed. Right. And everything, when you come home, it really is cold. You know, your, your atmosphere, and, and even I experience that. When, when you come home, it's like everybody's life went on. Right. You're stopped, and right. and I'm sure our brothers, oh, yeah. our brothers and sisters in arms from the previous wars can attest to yeah. that too. You know, um, but life is just so much different now. It's like the society, the the social media, and just everything. And when you come back, you're still engaged through Facebook and all those right. good things. Where I know in Persian Gulf, you know, I still have letters that I wrote home. Right. You know, um, it's just. Don't forget who you are. Stay yeah. true to yourself, and you're going to find your way. And find help. I mean, and you got to find the help. If you need help, and I mean, there's a lot of help out there. That there are so many organizations out there. We don't even know half of them right. that are there. Right. You know, and a lot of times you'll say, "I'm a vet," and they roll the red carpet out right. for you because you're a vet. Right. Unlike our Vietnam brothers and sisters that right. came, you know, they didn't. They didn't get that. Right. And we can never thank them enough for their service. We get that. Right. You know, and what I really love about it is. Our fellow comrades are there when we come home, right. yeah. and that shows you that passion, yeah. that there's support, you know. And if and civilians may not understand, you're not saying that they won't, because they they have that understanding of passion. But if you're lost, go find a brother or sister. Yeah. Yeah, just there, find somebody that served. There's a lot of great groups out there, and, 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 and you know, I, I mean, you tell people, you know, you got the VFW, the Legion, the DAV, all these sure, organizations. Sure. You got your churches, you got the mm -hmm. VA, and a lot of people go, "Well, I went there and it wasn't for me." There is something for everybody somewhere. I mean, sure. um, but you got to want the help too. I you mean, do. You, you got to go. I'm willing to get better or learn to live with this because it's never going to go away. Sure. And you that's know? one of the exciting things about me putting my my hat in the ring at the VFW. Mm -hmm. I recognize that we're going to have a lot of young people leaving the ranks soon. Mm -hmm. And well, they have been. You right. know, in Ohio. Yeah has a lot of reservists that have served in this right. war. and It's been a National Guard reservist war. Oh I mean, yeah, a lot of absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So me putting my hat in the ring at the VFW is because I want to add that twist of this generation right. to that post. Right. I want to make that, how do we get the young generation in here? Right. Because we're kind of like that segue between. And so I get it, I've been there, I've done it. What would I want? What do I want to see? Well, I want to see them coming into the post too. I don't want to right. see that die because and it's not coming into the post to drink or no, sit at a bar or gosh, anything like that. No. I mean, it, it's coming into the post to socialize oh, and learn about things. different things and the and community even, service yeah. that we provide. Yeah, you know, the huge. honor guard that we do. There's just so much to do. You know, so you can and get involved. I you mean, sure can. Yeah. You know, and it's so funny is I actually wanted to be on the honor guard and that's why I went to the post meeting and ended up walking out as adjutant a couple <laughs> meetings later. So <laughs> be careful, right? Yeah. But, you know, but I was okay with that because I know now I'm going to be able to make a difference. And, and we've had some conversations and we're going to continue to have conversations at our housekeeping meetings on right. what can we do differently here to get this post where it, it's a compliment of this Well, this I, I know the VFW and the Legion down at Wadsworth, like all the posts in the county. I mean, when we talked about we wanted to have an event down there, the red carpet rolled oh, out. Oh, absolutely. They're, all, they're always about They're community. so active. I love yeah, it. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's about, really, it's about educating the community and giving back to. Absolutely. So I want to thank you for coming on, but I always ask everybody this question. So if you had to do it all over again, would you do it again? Absolutely. Deanne, all the way. <laughs> thanks for coming on to the show. Thank we'll see you, you next month on Salute to Service. Thank you.
Did you know that 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Go to theshelterpetproject.org and search your local shelters and rescues. Go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt.